What's going on YouTube? I am going to do this review for Kendrick Lamar's album To Pimp a Butterfly. To Pimp a Butterfly is Kendrick Lamar's second studio album. Guys, this may come as a surprise because I was expecting a different sound for Kendrick Lamar. This is totally other than the opposite of what I thought that this album was going to sound like. And I don't know if it's a good thing or if it's a bad thing, but I, I am, however, a a Kendrick Lamar fan. I, I do love his first city, I mean his first album, Good Kid, Mad City, sorry. I love his first album, Good Kid, Mad City. Uh, I liked it every song. That album was a 10 out of 10. This album has to grow on me. I like maybe like Five or six songs on this album, but guys, certain songs I can tell that Kendrick Lamar was real depressed on, and I just feel like maybe some songs I don't know. It's, some songs need to really grow on me off this album. That's all I'm gonna say. But I I do like some of the songs on this album, and I I don't know which direction Kendrick was going in because you know he was kind of a little over the place with some of the songs on his album, but uh, I I. I guess he was just trying to try something different, but I, I don't. I'm not sure if it really worked for Kendrick Lamar. I just think he probably should have stayed in the same frame he was when he did his first album. And I'm not saying that he couldn't. He he couldn't try nothing new. But guys, like the direction that he's going, it it, it kind of went a little a little left for me. But guys, I, I'm just being honest. This is what I truly think. But I I I I, I y'all know I, I'm a huge Kendrick Lamar fan, so I'm just gonna get into this review of what I thought about the songs. The first song was Wesley's Theory. I, I, I guess he was saying Wesley Snipes Theory. But guys, it, some of the features on this album really came as a shock to me. George Clinton. Do you know how long it's been since we heard something from George Clinton? Guy? Okay, he's a legend. But guys, it's been a long time since I heard from George Clinton. And I think I heard a Thundercat before. But Wesley's Theory kind of reminded me of Prince a little bit. For some reason, I got a Prince vibe from the song and he did not sound like himself and i was kind of like okay really to be a butterfly. At first I did love you. kendrick is that you in there but I just wanna find is that you kendrick i, I can't tell that song really came as a surprise to me then you have for free the interlude and it sounded very jazzy like like Mo Better Blues. And I was like, okay, I didn't think. I did not think that this was his style. And it came as a surprise to me because. Big nigga, you ain't shit. Walking around like you God's gift to earth. Nigga, you ain't shit. You ain't even by me no. Like he went Mo, Mo Better Blues on my ass. That was Spike Lee movie. Now this was very old school. I will say I like King Kunta because it's very old school and it sounds a little like Dr. Dre, which I know Dr. Dre did most of the majority of every song on this album. Okay. This is my whole thing. I love the fact that he's going back to the old school sound. But some of the songs just really did not sound like Kendrick Lamar at all. And it, it just kind of took me by surprise because I was like, well, maybe this album is going to have to grow on me and just going to have to grow on me. Because some of the songs does not sound like Kendrick Lamar. And it really put a different type of vibe for me for this album because I, I totally had a different vibe about this uh, how this album was going to sound. So when I heard it, when me and my brother had heard it, it was just kind of like, oh, you know, kind of. And I, I was listening to some of the songs, but I do like King Kunta because it sounds a little like N.W.A. a little bit, a little bit of um, Snoop Dogg. And it just has an old school flavor to it. It, it just sounds like... Um, uh, 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 it just has a whole lot of old school sounds on this song. It sounds like something from the 80s. And I do respect that, but I just didn't think that Kendrick was going to go to this route with this album. I just thought it was going to have a different sound. Then we got Institutionalized, which I also like. I 
alleviate the rap industry politics, milk the game up, never let it toast and tolerant. And also, Snoop Dogg was also featuring on the song with some other people. No, she's put me through colleges. BB, all you get be true, but the problem is a dream, only a dream. Okay. I do like it, okay, but he went, he had a lot of songs that had through like three different parts, and then it's, 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 it's some of the songs was kind of confusing a little bit, and I, I, you know, I never would have thought I would ever say anything like this about Kendrick Lamar, and this is not really a, no, this is not no shade, this is not no shade, this is just me really not, really not knowing that which type of direction he was going with this album, I just really think that he was just exploring and was wanting to try something new, but I'm not sure if this was the right sound. But anyway, Institutionalized was, was pretty cool. The beat was pretty nice, but it had three different parts to this song. Like, it had three different personalities of each song. Like, it had interludes at the end of every song. It had, you know, it, it, it just kind of definitely through. maybe feeling these walls a little bit. I wouldn't necessarily say these walls is my favorite, but I actually kind of liked it, these walls. It was, it was different. That's gotta grow on me, y'all. You know, I love Kendrick Lamar, but this album's gonna have to grow on me. We have the next song, which was depressing as hell. Okay, let me just tell y'all, you. Which is number six. Okay, guys, I was just not feeling you. I don't know what was going. On with Kendrick, and it, it it it's 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 very depressing. Okay, because then he had a segment on here like where he was just sat, was screaming out, and just I was just like, is he okay? And then he had a, a segment, a, a part of the song where he was just sounding kind of drunk. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Okay, I don't know what was going on with Kendrick, but he was just not himself. After one time, that's unforgiving. You even FaceTime instead of a hospital visit. Guess you thought he'd recover well. Third surgery, Kendrick. Stop the bleeding for real. Kendrick. Then he died, died himself for saying. Okay. I don't know what the hell was going on, but that song was just depressing as shit. And I don't know if he was drunk. I don't know what was going on, but guys, I was just really not feeling that song at all. Now, number seven. Number seven is my shit. Okay, all right. Okay, I like how I started with the, the little uh, harmonizations. I actually liked the song. It was different. Nigga, we gonna be all right. Y'all, this song is cold as hell. Okay, I was definitely feeling we gonna be all right. The beat is nice. Okay, it's, it's a little jazzy. Okay, let me tell you something. I love I love a little jazzy, but I don't like when it's too jazzy. You know, I like it to have jazzy with a twist. Some of the songs on here was just too jazzy for me, and this just did not sound like Kendrick. But anyway, all right, I was definitely feeling it. The beat was nice. The, it had a very nice, he was vibing nice on there. You know, he was rapping. You know, and I actually liked it, that song for sale. Uh, 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 uh. Like he just took me to different places, different different levels, and different places with this album. I was just kind of like, wow. Wow. Now, actually, this song kind of actually reminded me a little bit of Erica Badu. It actually sounded like Erica Badu would be on the song, kind of. And most of the songs also kind of reminded me of Q-Tip. Okay, he had a little Q-Tip flavor on the majority of these songs. And, you know, I, I, which was cool, guys. I do respect the fact, however, that he, it, this is real music, okay? Regardless of if this album has to grow on me or not, this album, it, it will grow on me in due time. But, guys, this is real this is real music. At least he's not mumbling over songs. At least he's not, not sounding mumbled and, and crazy. You know, but I, I'm going to have to listen to this album a couple more times to, to, to really get it because... Yeah. This is time attraction, period, and rappers finish a fraction while writing 
Mad Max. Hey. Thank God for rap. I would say it got me a pack, but what's better than that? Okay, Mama was cool. Okay, I, 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 I it was very laid back. Y'all you know, know I like laid back songs. You know, it just sounds like a summer type laid back, and I, I was there. I was definitely feeling it, y'all. I was definitely feeling it. Then we have Hood Politics, okay, which is probably one of my favorites on this album, apart from the Black of the Berry. But guys, but Hood Politics is is my shit, okay. It kind of started off sounding like Michael McDonald. I was like, what? What the hell? It was just giving me a little uh, Michael McDonald kind of for some reason. But I liked it then. When it got into the beat, I actually liked it. Hood politics. It, it, this is one of my favorites. Let's get to it. The captain suit with the extras, Elkos, Monte Carlos, Low Kings and dresses, Rip Rocks, yeah. Beef Focus, Dollar Cost. Okay, guys, I this song was very deep. It was also featuring James Fauntleroy and Ronald Isley, which came as a surprise to me because I haven't heard nothing from him in a while. But guys, I actually liked how much a dollar cost. It really had deep meaning, and it's it's very true. You know, it just explains about uh uh. You know, wealth, and I, I, I actually really can kind of relate to this song a little bit. It's deep. I won't say it's my favorite, but guys, I actually really like, you know, this song a little bit. You know, a, a James Funkler was singing his ass off, okay? And Ronald Ozzy's song very, at the very end of the song. But guys, I, I, I really think that this song had a deep message. Hood politics had a deep message. Mama had a deep message, okay? The Black of the Berry, which is number 13, okay? But then we get to, uh, let's get to number 12, okay? Um, complexion, okay? A Zulu love. Guys, this is also talking about loving yourself for who you are. I, I definitely, definitely, definitely consider and, and definitely like the message. I, 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 is it my favorite? No, it's not my favorite, but it's going to have to grow on me. But guys, I definitely like the message that, uh, that these songs have, even though the music is probably not a little bit too much my style, or I don't feel it's really Kendrick's style either. I just felt like he was just kind of thinking out the box with this album, which is cool. I like when you think out the box, but I just think that Kendrick could have probably kept a little bit in his frame. Some songs was in his frame, like The Black of the Berry, Hood, Politics, All Right. And maybe institutionalized and King Kunta came as a surprise to me, but I, 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 you know, I really, I really did like the messages behind each one of these songs, but Complexion was there. I, 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 I would say Complexion was, was pretty cool as far as message. The message that he was trying to say that you should love yourself. It's a very deep album though. And that's one of the things I like about it, but it, 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 this song actually teaches you how to love yourself. It doesn't matter what race you are, love yourself who you are. The Black of the Berry, which I did, which is number 13, I did a review for it. And uh, it, it, uh, the Black of the Berry is my favorite song on this album, hands down, okay? Apart from Hood Politics and Mama. But I actually, I actually like... The Black of the Berry because that's like I said that song is just talking about racial uh, conflict and it's just talking about society and how blacks are not recognized for their talent you know I, I've said this but guys I actually really can relate to the Black of the Berry y'all I think a lot of blacks can a lot of black people can relate to that song then we got um, You Ain't Gotta Lie Mama Said which was different It definitely gave me a Q-tip vibe. Definitely gave me a Q-tip. And maybe a little bit of most depth. It's so 90s. And I like it, y'all. It's groovy. Uh, hey. Then we get to um, I, which definitely gave me Ronald, uh, the Isley Brothers, uh, who said lady, a little bit. So I promise this nigga, I love myself. I'm when you're looking at me. But tell me when you see me. Okay, I like this song. Okay, it's very old school. You know, it, it, it's just talking about uh, uh, loving yourself, and I like that. You know, I like songs that have messages in there teaching you uh, how to love yourself, self help. 
you know, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. But the sound of this album, I just was not expecting that this would be Kendrick's sound for this album. I was expecting something different. Then we got, then we go to Mortal Man. Okay. I don't know what type of joke that this was. But I, 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 Mortal Man was pretty deep. It was 12 minutes. Okay, when it got to the end of the song... Hold that thought. <laughs> Maximum strength. And that's right now why you a teenager, why you still strong, why you still want to lift weight. Sound why you still want to shoot like back. Tupac. Once you turn 30, it's like they take the heart and soul. Whoever the hell is do this. Black man in this country. Sounds like and if you don't Tupac. Believe, you can look around. You don't see no loud mouth 30 year old mother. And I don't know if this is a joke or if they're trying to play a game or what the hell they call us, but it's not funny. I'm so sorry. What turmoil you going on? Because at the end of the song. The butterfly represents the talent of Mad City. The result, wings begin to emerge. What's your perspective on that? Pop. 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 That's not funny. Okay, I don't know, I don't know what, I'm not going to get into it. Like I said, okay, regardless of the last song, that is not funny if they're trying to play a joke. But anyway, I, okay, this album, I will give this album a, a 8 out of 10. I'll give this album an 8 out of 10. And um, I would have to keep listening to it more and more. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I like the fact that it's, it's, it's different, and he wanted to try something different, but it just wasn't what I expected. And I am going to prompt, you know, listen to it more, and you know, try to just hear some of the songs out because maybe it's something I heard the first time and, and, and didn't pay attention to when I listened to it the second time. You know, 